Hello, hi everyone. Um, hope you guys can hear me. Uh, I think Nihi just did an introduction. Uh, so if you guys can hear me, if you can just reply with a yes here, just so I make sure that my audio is working fine. Okay, perfect. It seems like you can hear me. Okay, so uh, yeah, thanks everyone for coming here. Uh, so yeah, today's tutorial is just going to be about uh, showing you guys how you can uh, go from uh, essentially a raw uh, data set um, to actually uh, something that you can fit into your uh, neural uh, network model. And then we're also going to build uh, a, a brief version of an LSTM as well. So uh, if you haven't done it already, guys, if you can go um, on... Uh, the uh, AI core uh, GitHub page. Um, so I believe it's uh, yeah here. And if you guys can uh, clone this uh, repo, so here is the address. So you can clone the repo, and then we are pretty much ready to go. Uh, one thing that you need to do uh, before you load your notebook is uh, to source this ENVRC file because um, that is going to be useful for the environmental variables so that uh, the file works correct correctly. So uh, what we do uh, here is quite simple. So, uh, so you need to go into this uh, torch text folder, then you can check uh, whether the ENVRC is there, it should be there and then you just need to uh, source it. You source it and after that you're ready to uh, launch your notebook. And also, yeah, as I go along guys, uh, feel free to put any questions here um, in uh, the in the classroom. I check them every now and then uh, and also given this is the first tutorial that I do, uh, I'm very open to receive any feedback that you guys have on how I can improve as well. So yeah, let's give it a start. Um, so uh, basically we're going to open this data extraction, uh, data extraction file, which is essentially just to uh, get some data set uh, from the torch text data set um, and then just uh, save it as a CSV. Uh, obviously, in real life you'd have your own data set uh, here I'm just using the data set that they provide but I'm just gonna um, download it in a CSV which is a format that you most likely will have if you have your own raw data and then we're gonna start from there and build the whole pipe the whole pipeline from scratch so yeah here we're just gonna import some libraries uh, if you don't have them that you will have to install them but hopefully it'll be fine uh, I'm not going to go through this uh, thing much in depth, but basically here I'm putting sequential equal false just because I don't want the text to be tokenized. I want my Excel, sorry, my CSV file to have the text as uh, basically one uh, sentence per cell. Uh, and then essentially I'm just creating three pandas data frames uh, with uh, text uh, and labels, uh, so two columns. Um, and then given that uh, in the data set that they give us, the labels are positive, neutral, and negative. So this is uh, actually a sentiment classification problem. I forgot to mention, uh, I want to convert them to zero, one, and two because that makes it easier for us to deal with our model. So here I'm just gonna create a mapping, uh, which is just a dictionary. And then here I'm going to use the apply function, which basically uh, creates another, um, column in the data frame called numerical labels, which is uh, just taken from labels, applying this mapping that I specified here. Uh, and then we're just gonna save it as a CSV. Now, if I'm just gonna quickly show you what this looks like, we've got the text, so the review, we've got a label, and then we've got a numerical labels, and that should now have been uh, saved if we go here as well. So we can just open one of these, and this is basically the raw data that we are now going to tokenize, going to clean, and going to use uh, to build our model. Before I move on, is there any initial question or anything that is not working? No. 
okay uh, seems like everything's fine if uh, you guys got any problem uh, yeah feel free to uh, let me know in the comments um, and then we are ready to uh, open the second notebook which is the uh, torch text intro cool so here we've got a few uh, things to import as well again uh, you might have to uh, install some libraries if you haven't already although I hope that most of you who are following uh, perhaps the NLP uh, course that Nihir is doing will already have this uh, loaded okay and here we start so basically uh, we uh, are importing the uh, field class from the torchtext.data uh, module uh, now what this field class basically do is we need, we need to tell it uh, how we want a certain field to be processed and the fields are ultimately uh, the columns that we're going to have in our CSV file. So here I'm defining a text field uh, and by sequential equal true uh, it just means that it's a sequential data so for example text is sequential data so what it's going to do is going to tokenize it for us and I'm just going to choose the spacey tokenizer although you guys can choose your own tokenizer as well and I'm also going to lowercase the text uh, you can choose to do that or not uh, and then I'm going to create another field which is the label field uh, which is going to be the numerical labels that we created uh, is not going to be sequential and we are not going to uh, basically um, create a vocabulary on that so we set use vocab equal to false and here uh, we haven't even imported our data we're just creating this field abstract structure that we are later going to use uh, basically to process our data but for now we are just going to um, run this and then uh, well technically we don't need to do this step but I'm just going to reload the uh, CSV as data frames just to make sure that everything is working fine although this step is not essential for the model but um, yeah here we are so you guys can see uh, text sentences uh, then the label and then numerical label which is one when it's sorry zero when it's negative one when it's neutral and two when it's positive uh, cool now the next thing we need to do is to define uh, a list um, basically where we're going to uh, specify uh, how we want each of these three fields or each of the fields in our data set to be treated so here we define text and labels field and here we just need to uh, put basically um, a list of tuples where each tuple uh, is comprised of two elements so the first one is a string which is basically the name of uh, the column and the second one is a field type uh, which uh, corresponds to uh, basically how you want to treat that column so whether it's a text or whether it's a label uh, now given we're going to use numerical labels we're not going to use these labels here I'm just going to set that to none so that's going to be ignored uh, now I think uh, this way of doing it is a little bit clunky so I read that in the um, in future versions of torch text uh, this will be a dictionary where you can just put the key as text and the value as uh, your field type and so on which is nicer I think that version is already on github actually but they haven't released it so uh, yeah in future versions this thing might change but for now just have to write a list of tables uh, and here we are cool and then I think we are pretty much ready to start uh, building our uh, data set so uh, today we're going to use a tabular data set uh, so there are various uh, built-in uh, data set types uh, in uh, the torch text library that can handle uh, common data formats so this one is good for csv or tsv files however there are other data sets that are available if you're dealing with different problems so here at the top of the notebook i put a link uh, to a page which is a page that i used to study to create this tutorial so this tutorial is actually an adaptation uh, of uh, that uh, page with some differences uh, so if you go here for example you can see you've got language modeling database which is uh, basically used uh, when you have a txt file or you even have a translation data set um, if you have for example english and french and so on so you can read more about it but for today we're just going to use the tabular data set which is uh, yeah meant to work with um, yeah 
CSV and uh, so on data frames. So yes, essentially uh, we are going to split uh, basically into three um, three tabular data sets, which are the train validation and the test. So uh, as path, I'm going to put in the folder. Uh, the folder is the folder uh, where uh, these um, data sets uh, are stored and I have defined it uh, a little bit above. Uh, where did I define it? Um, yeah, I define it here using the environmental variables. Um, and then uh, here we've got basically the three uh, CSV files and then we need to specify the format. So skip header is true because it's not going to take the header as a um, as a, an input feature because obviously this is just the header but if we didn't have the header we just go straight into this line that we'd have skip header equal false and then we put the fields variable which is equal to this field here which is the list of tuples so actually uh, until now we had two separate things so we had basically um, these two uh, abstract field objects and then here basically we just specified uh, what we want our column um, to be treated as but we haven't actually input the data in whereas here we're actually uh, putting the data in and we are connecting these uh, our own raw data sets with the types that we define above and so this whole thing is just basically going to create the tabular data set for us uh, and actually it's going to create three tabular data sets because we've got three here and so we just run that it might take a while and then after that we are good to go so I'm just going to show you what this looks like very quickly uh, so uh, this thing by the way this tabular data set is iterable uh, and is indexable so we can say for example index 0 and um, this is uh, an example object so each element of the tabular data set is an example object and this basically has got uh, a number of attributes such as uh, text and uh, numerical labels so here you can see one sentence uh, which has already been tokenized for us uh, yeah so it wasn't tokenized in the CSV but then we put the spacey tokenizer so this is now being tokenized and then we've got the label so two uh, and then yeah so that's pretty much it basically this is just to show you uh, what it looks like and now uh, the next step is to build our vocabulary so we need to build our vocabulary only on the training uh, data set because we don't want to make any assumption on the uh, testing or the validation data set uh, so we're just going to build it on the training data set. Um, those of you who are following the NLP course might know how to do it. So I've just put a line here for you guys to fill in. Uh, I'm going to give you 30 seconds if someone can put uh, a solution on the, uh, on the class. That would be great. Okay, so a question, how do we initialize environment variables? Uh, yeah, so as I said at the start, uh, so what you need to do before you open uh, your Jupyter, if you have already opened it, you need to basically kill the instance and uh, reopen a new one. So you need to go here. Uh, I'm just going to open a new tab just to show you. Um, so you need to go essentially uh, into the tutorial torch text folder. Uh, so not just a tutorial, you need to actually go into the torture folder and then if you do ls-ah uh, you, sh you should see an envrc file you just need to source it, so you type source space dot envrc press enter and then you're ready to uh, launch your Jupyter which will already have the environmental variables loaded in uh, dot build vocab, yeah that's right so uh, what goes before dot build vocab Yeah, this is also a good solution, yeah, because if you put uh, the exclamation mark in Jupyter, it's as if you are uh, basically running a terminal uh, command, so yeah, that's right. Okay, so uh, yeah, we build the vocab on uh, the uh, text, so we just go text.build uh, uh, 
vocab uh, and then we are going to build it only on the training data set what we can do uh, we can also set uh, for example mean fret parameter which tells us uh, to ignore all the words that appear with a frequency less than the minimum frequency uh, the default is one i'm not gonna uh, define that parameter now but we can do that you can also specify our own uh, Pack token or unknown word token, uh, but I'm just gonna go with the defaults. So I'm just gonna build our vocab, uh, and then uh, yeah, just to mention the uh, text of vocab has two uh, objects, sorry, two methods. So items and story. So that is uh, integer to string and string to integer. Uh, and essentially, what the build vocab does is it maps each uh, word to um, a to an integer, which is a number basically, which is our vocabulary. So for example, here we can see that the word, uh, sorry, the number 12 has been mapped to the word it. And obviously if you do the reverse, then we'll see that the word it's been mapped to the number 12. And uh, it does that uh, when we build the vocabulary for every word that uh, is uh, in our data set, unless we specify a minimum frequency, in which case only consider the words that appear with the frequency that is higher than the minimum frequency. Cool. Uh, now, uh, the next thing to do is to build a bucket iterator. Uh, so some of you might already be familiar with these uh, if you follow the NLP course. Uh, if not, I'm just going to quickly uh, explain what it does. So essentially, um, it basically uh, buckets our data set into multiple batches. Um, and it creates a generator, so that means that we can uh, iterate over our batches as we do the training of our uh, machine learning model. So uh, this is useful for a few reasons. Uh, so, well, first of all, it batches the data for us, but it also batches it in a way that it minimizes the amount of padding that is required. So um, in each batch, uh, all the sentences will need to have the same uh, length. So if we have a sentence that has got 10 words and a sentence that's got eight words, then uh, we need to fill the other remaining uh, two spaces and they are going to be filled with the pad token. Uh, however, we don't want to have, uh, you know, a sentence that is 500 words long and a sentence that is two words long and then having, you know, 498 pad tokens. That's not ideal. So basically, um, it uh, first of all, it shuffles the sentences so that the order is randomized so that we don't make any assumption on the order in which they're given to us. And it also uh, set the uh, batches so that sentences with similar length will be in the same batch. So that, that minimizes the amount of padding that we need to do. And also, I think uh, an NLP model trains better if we start training from batteries that have, um, basically, the length of the sentences is lower. And that is what this sort key is doing. So it's telling me, it, uh, sort uh, the sentences according to their length, basically. Uh, and then, yeah, sort within batch equal true. So we're just going to run that. Here, there is an alternative way that you can do this so you can define a back iterator for the train and the validation uh, data set and a normal iterate on the test data set uh, because the test data set doesn't need to be uh, sorted uh, and uh, yeah you don't need to do anything uh, so uh, you can do that as well however i think the first configuration is more common uh, here note that we have a tuple with three elements so train valid and iter which are our three tabular data sets that we uh, define uh, above. So it takes this input tabular data sets and then we got the batch size as a tuple, which needs to have the same length as uh, the previous tuple. And so this is basically uh, the batch size for the train, batch size for validation and batch size for test set. Um, and then we are uh, ready to go. So I'm gonna run this. Uh, now you can see that uh, train iter, which is what we've got here, so we've got train iter, valid iter, and test iter, they are all back iterators. Uh, uh, so if we uh, convert it to a generator by calling the iter method around it, and then we print the first element by just calling the next method, uh, then we can see what one of them looks like. So this is basically a batch of size 64 and each sentence has got 31 uh, tokens. And so each batch is basically got, uh, yeah, 31 times 64. Uh, now, if I run it again, uh, I think now it's 32, and then, you know, the next one is 34, so 11. So you can see the different batch sizes, so different batches have different uh, length of sentences. Uh, any questions until this point? Uh, 
uh, so dot key uh, so within bats help doing yes uh, where is that so this one essentially uh, I think so this one is basically uh, sorting it uh, is sorting the sentences uh, according uh, to their length as it uh, splitting them into batches uh, so this x this is basically a lambda function so this x is a dummy variable i think uh, when when it does it what this x is is effectively um, it's train dot uh, zero or something like that so if you look for example um, Let's do it. Let's see if that works. Um, yeah. So if I do dot text, then we have the text. So this X stands for train and some element here. Uh, dot text. So basically, this is saying okay, sort each X according to uh, the length of their. So X is basically just this. So X is a, an example object. So sort each example object inside this iterator according to the length of their uh, text method, which is basically a string, sorry, a list of strings. Uh, so within batch, I think it just uh, sorts the sentences also within each individual batch. Um, that's it. Uh, okay. And then the next thing that we need to do, which is actually quite important, uh, is we need to uh, call the list around each of these back iterator. Uh, now the reason for that will become clear later, I'm going to explain it, but it's because at the moment they are just a generators, and a generator, uh, once you use it once, you basically, you're done with it. So if you want to reuse it, you need to reinstantiate it. So that led to a problem where I was not able to basically train on more than one epoch. Um, and I'm going to explain that later when we come to the code. So by doing a list around it, uh, basically we make sure that this is always accessible. So we were going to run this. Uh, and here I'm just going to show you. So uh, for example, an element of the train data loader, um, which is this one has got, uh, yeah, 42, which is sentence length times batch size. Uh, this is the text uh, text uh, tensor, and uh, the le the numerical labels tensor is just uh, a 64 long tensor where each element is the label of each sentence, which is going to be zero, one, or two according to whether it's negative, uh, neutral, or positive. Uh, now at this point, uh, this uh, tensor, uh, the text tensor, is just basically um, each word, uh, well, actually, you can see it here. So uh, each uh, number here represents to uh, the number that the vocabulary that we built map to an individual word. So actually, if you go back and find out, okay, what is this 108, what is this three, and so on, you're actually going to build your own sentence. And so that's how we basically turn the uh, our sentences into a numerical uh, tensor. And uh, yeah we are pretty much done because now we've got our train data loader um, and we can check what type it is it should be uh, basically a well it's now a list because we converted it into a list so yeah it's a list uh, so now we are pretty much ready to convert this and to put this into our neural network so you can see here you've got all the batteries and each of them has got different um, the first dimension is going to be different uh, because of the reason that I was saying before that uh, yeah sentences with different lengths are batched together uh, and yeah I think now pretty much we are ready to start building our model uh, yeah here are just some print statements that I wanted to show you guys um, to see what it looks like so this is one batch so we've got the first sentence here then we've got our second sentence third sentence and so on um, and then here we've got the predictions so for each sentence whether it's negative neutral or positive and that is our input cool now before we go into building our model uh, are there any questions no 
Okay, let's move on. <clears throat> so here I want you guys to try and build uh, an LSTM and also to train it. I'm going to explain uh, the high level structure of this um, neural network. So um, basically it's going to have an embedding layer first and uh, unlike what you did uh, in the NLP course where I think you uh, use uh, pre-trained uh, embeddings from Glove, now we are going to uh, uh, basically uh, learn our own embeddings uh, from scratch. That means they may not be as good as the Glove ones, but um, you know, I just wanted to show you how you can do it. And obviously the more data you've got, the better the embeddings get. So uh, here we've got a first uh, embedding uh, layer and uh, basically it's got two dimensions. So uh, the input, which is the length of the vocabulary, and then here we've got the dimension of the embedding, uh, which is our uh, embedding size. Then what I want you guys to do is to uh, implement uh, an LSTM, which uh, basically a simple one, uh, so not a bidirectional one, a simple one. Um, and uh, so as you may know, we can also have a deep LSTM, so we can basically stack uh, multiple LSTMs on top of each other. However, uh, we are not going to do it now, so I'm just going to set number of LSTM layers equal to one. So you, I want you to implement that as well in your definition, uh, so that if, in case you want to actually have a deep uh, LSTM, uh, then you can uh, change that to two or three later on. And then we're going to have some uh, linear layers at the end, so I'm going to define the module list. And here uh, I'm just going to add uh, basically uh, a number of linear layers um, basically uh, according to how many linear layers we've got here. Uh, well, the default I said as one, but later on we're going to put it at two when we're going to actually uh, train our model. Uh, and then I wanted to implement a final layer, uh, which is a linear layer uh, with our predictions. And then here in the forward pass, uh, it should be hopefully quite familiar. We are basically just uh, passing our initial torch tensor um, through our model. And what you guys need to do is uh, to basically uh, apply the linear layer here and also apply the tan H nonlinearity, which we define uh, here. Then this is our model and this is our training. So, um, I'm just going to run through and then I'm going to give you uh, five minutes to complete the uh, fill the variables. Uh, so here I'm just going to uh, yeah, define uh, the atom optimizer, uh, cross entropy loss because it's a multi-class uh, classification problem. It's going to have three uh, training epochs. Uh, and then here we're going to uh, turn on the train mode and here we're going to have the evaluation mode. Um, if you haven't seen that before, uh, there are some differences. So for example, if you were to implement a dropout layer, um, then uh, in evaluation mode, uh, you would not uh, basically use the dropout. So it's telling the uh, model to just turn off the dropout um, and a few other things. So for example, during evaluation mode, we don't need uh, to keep track of the gradients and so on. So what you need to do essentially, okay, so here we've got four epoch in range number of epochs. Uh, so here is iterating, uh, the outside for loop is iterating over the number of epochs that we're going to have. And then we have an inner for loop which is uh, iterating over all our batteries inside each epoch. Uh, and we're going to train, uh, take them from the um, basically uh, train data loader here and from the valid data loader uh, on the uh, evaluation mode. Um, so, and then basically each batch is comprised of, uh, basically it's got two a method, which is basically text and numerical labels. Um, so what I want you guys to do is to zero the gradients, then to implement the forward pass, to implement the loss, and then to back pr propagate the loss here. Uh, and then basically we've got this final step, which is basically we uh, update the weights uh, by doing a step uh, so the optimizer is doing a step uh, in the uh, direction where the loss is um, basically uh, going to be uh, minimized. So yeah, uh, are there any questions? Uh, these are my uh, labels uh, targets. Yes, exactly. These are the targets. Yeah, these are the targets. Uh, how to source it from within the Jupyter Notebook, you just basically, uh, as someone suggested above, you just 
type uh, exclamation mark source space dot in VRC. I'm actually I actually have never done this. I'm not sure if you need to set your environment variables before uh, launching the interpreter. It might be that this doesn't work. I don't know if this doesn't work. Just shut your notebook uh, and. Uh, do this on the actual terminal and open a new one because some environmental variables need to be set I think before you launch Python uh, for them to work I'm not sure about these ones um, yeah okay so I'm gonna give you guys uh, okay uh, we still got some time but I want to show another model later so I'm just gonna give you actually four minutes so I'm gonna be back at uh, 38 uh, past and if you guys can uh, complete uh, those feeling uh, those uh, things in the meantime uh, and maybe put the solutions uh, in the comments as well and I'll be back soon Hello, hi, hi again. Uh, okay, so has anyone uh, been able to do that? Uh, okay, someone still seems to have problems uh, with uh, the source 
command. Uh, well, okay, if it doesn't work, uh, what you can do, uh, basically, you can just uh, check the folder, your own folder, where you have uh, the um, where you have the data stored uh, and the path will be unique to your own uh, laptop of course uh, and here basically at the start uh, instead of putting this OS doc m doc, uh, doc m data there you're just going to um, paste uh, basically your own path directly so it will just uh, pick it up this is just a way a general way so that you know people that have different paths to the final folder according to different laptops can just generalize the code and just run it as it goes but you can just hard code your own uh, full path if you want without using environment all right you can do i believe something like that which is means just go back one level um, it should work okay uh so we were here well, I'm just going to run through because we don't have that much time. We've just got 20 minutes left. Uh, so I hope some of you managed to fill this in. So LSTM, so we're going nn dot, uh, LSTM uh, and uh, the uh, input uh, dimension is going to be our embedding. So it's going to be uh, mdim and uh, the output, uh, uh, which is what we're going to feed into our uh, linear layers is going to be a uh, hidden dim. Uh, and then uh, we need to define the uh, num uh, layers um, num layers variable equal to num of LSTM layers. Cool. Uh, predictor here we're going to have uh, so another linear layer so it's going to be an end of uh, linear um, and uh, we are going to have uh, as input the hidden dimension. And as output, we're going to have three, which is the number of our uh, output classes, so negative, positive, and neutral. And then here, so for layer in separate linear layers, so these are basically um, linear layers. So we're just going to do layer feature, and here we're just going to apply uh, to an H. Just a quick note, you, you don't need the self.layer here because it's in a loop, so we're just doing for layer in self.linear layers. And then the prediction is just going to be a self.predictor, uh, and we are just going to pass the feature in. And we're done. Now, training. Uh, okay, so zero the gradient. So um, here we need to do basically... Um, so the optimizer, so opt uh, dot, there is this method called zero grad. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, forward pass. So forward pass, we just call the model. So there is basically something in the uh, torch library that when you call the model, it just calls the forward method. And that is done through uh, the call uh, magic uh, method which is in the parent class which is the nn.module if that is not clear or you guys want to know more about it put it in the comments um, and i can clarify that but basically we just need to um, yeah call our model uh, on uh, the uh, input which is the x and here we're just going to call our loss function uh, so it's going to be loss uh, fun and then we're just going to do uh, predictions comma y and then uh, loss dot backward cool uh, i think that's it and then uh, okay so here I've, I've run it already before but if i'm running it now it should start running and then it might take a while, uh, so I'm not gonna uh, let it run until the end. Um, I'm just gonna wait until one epoch is over, uh, and then you should uh, see this uh, logger. I put a logger here, it's logging information to the terminal. Now, quick note, you can use the print statement here as well, which is fine. Uh, I personally prefer to use uh, loggers, especially if you need to give your code to someone else. If you're just going to use your code yourself, that's fine to use print statements. But if you want to use something in production um, or you want to create your own package that other people can import and use, then you don't want to have many print statements because when people are using things that they might, you know, see some print statements out of the blue that they don't really understand and maybe they don't want. 
Whereas if you use loggers, uh, there is a way for people to basically switch it on and off and set the logger, uh, logger level. So this is info, but there are actually five logger levels. So I think it's the bug, info, warning, error, and critical. Anyway, this is a minor detail. You can just put a print statement here if you don't have the login library installed and that should work fine as well. Um, yeah, so let's uh, wait until uh, one until this first epoch is finished. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to check the questions. Okay, uh, I'm glad that worked. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, I think this is, yes, this is exactly the things that are in the ENVRC file, which is basically uh, what you sourced. So that's basically going to set you your uh, environment. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah, this is almost done, the first epoch at least. Um, and then uh, we should see an initial value for the uh, loss. How are we doing with time? Yeah, 15 minutes. Almost there. Cool. So yeah, we've got training loss, validation loss, um, and then it's going to do in the second epoch. Now I'm just going to kill it, uh, but you guys can just keep training it if you want. Uh, it will go until the end. Cool. Okay, so this is the first uh, part of the tutorial. Now the second part is going to be much shorter uh, because I'm not going to go through all of these again, but I'm just going to show you a different type of data set and a different type of problem and how you can do it. Uh, uh, before we had uh, a single label problem, so one label which was the sentiment, and that was a multi-class uh, problem, so that had three possible um, outputs, which is negative, neutral, and positive. Uh, now here we're going to have a multi-label data set, so there are six labels, um, but each label is just binary, so it's going to have es essentially two classes, which means uh, either zero or one. And here are some comments and here's going to tell you, is it toxic? Is it severe toxic? Is it obscene? Is it a threat? Is it an insult? Or is it an identity? Hey, zero means not, no, uh, and one means yes. And this is a data set from a Kaggle uh, competition that you can download as well. Although, yeah, if you clone the library, if you clone the repo, it should already be there. Um, so I'm just going to load it, uh, load it as well, make sure that it works and that you have it loaded and then we are pretty much ready to go. <clears throat> Now, a lot of things are similar uh, to what we did before, so I'm just going to run you through the differences. The first step is the same. Uh, the second step is the fields. So uh, before we only had uh, one label, here we have multiple labels. So we just need to pass in all our labels in separate tuples and uh, basically, yeah, here, here the first element is a string, which is your column name, and the second one is your field object, which is either basically sequential true or sequential false, uh, and however you have defined it, so text and labels, basically. <clears throat> and we're not going to use these ID, so I'm just going to set it to none. So that's the first uh, slight difference. Then this bit is pretty much the same. Uh, I'm just going to set here in the build vocab minimum frequency equal two. So we're just going to ignore the words that are going to appear only once. Uh, and then uh, I think, uh, okay, this is taking a little bit longer to build the vocabulary because it's a bigger data set. Um, and then we're ready to uh, build our batch, uh, our back iterator. Here you can see uh, what this looks like. So this is one comment, for example. And now we are going to have, uh, so basically 64 labels per, sorry, 64, yeah, 64 points uh, per label. So basically this batch has got length 64, but each of the six labels uh, is gonna be um, basically appear. So this is basically the 64 uh, <coughs> labels for the toxic labels. So it's gonna tell you, okay, is uh, the first uh, sentence 
toxic, the second sentence, and so on. And this is about severe toxic, and then you've got uh, obscene, and so on. That's why uh, you got more, um, yeah, you've got more things here. And this vase, if you haven't seen it, you can call it on uh, an instance of a class, and it's going to return a dictionary where uh, the keys are all the uh, methods of the class and the values are the value of those methods. So this class, for example, um, is going to have method toxic, severe toxic, and so on. Uh, then we need to do the listing, uh, as before, uh, and then we are ready to go. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, to do our LSTM, which I've already done. Uh, now, uh, just one thing that I want you guys to appreciate is that uh, our output is now got six um, dimensions instead of three. However, that is slightly different from what we had before. So before uh, we had three uh, basically output uh, dimensions, but each of them was representing uh, the negative, positive or neutral. It wasn't technically a probability of uh, the common being negative, positive or neutral because in order to turn into a probability you need to pass a softmax uh, function on it and we didn't do it explicitly. However, the cross entropy loss that we called uh, does that uh, under the hood. So uh, that's what they did. So basically the output was not directly interpretable as a probability but it was still related somehow to the probability as uh, the labels being uh, negative, neutral and positive, but those three were basically part of the same label which was the sentiment label. Whereas here, this six is uh, not this is not six classes, but it's actually six labels. And each label has two classes, however, we're just going to represent it by one number which goes from zero to one. So this is a conceptual difference which is important to appreciate. Uh, if my explanation wasn't clear enough, uh, put it in the comments. I'm going to check it uh, soon. Everything else is pretty much the same uh, as far as the uh, class is concerned, the uh, LSTM. Uh, there are some other differences here in the training. Um, so uh, here uh, we've got the Y, which is now basically, uh, we need to essentially, as our labels, we need to concatenate uh, all our uh, different labels for each of the different uh, outputs, so toxic, severe, toxic, obscene, and so on. So we need to concatenate them um, and convert it to float, and that's just because uh, yeah, the loss that we're going to use requires flow as an input, whereas the um, just the simple cross entropy loss requires the Y to be a long uh, type tensor. Uh, now we're going to use this uh, batch, uh, this get attribute, and what this does is essentially is going to call um, is the same as doing batch dot label where label is whatever is here. Now this uh, this way that I define it here allows me to uh, basically um, define this in a general way and call it as a string. Uh, and I'm just going to show you why very quickly actually. Uh, so um, if I do that, um, I can do, for example, toxic, and I'm just going to show you the first label. I can do severe toxic, and it's going to show you the severe toxic. So this is basically the first batch. Um, however, um, if I want to iterate over it, um, I would have to write, okay, uh, batch dot toxic, batch dot severe toxic, and so on. Whereas uh, with a get attribute, this is the same as if I do uh, this and I put that into a uh, bracket, into, uh, yeah, as a string. Uh, and this is exactly the same, but uh, this way is more generalizable, so I can just iterate um, and create a list comprehension here and iterate over all the labels that we've got. I uh, hope that's clear. If not, let me know. Uh, and these are pretty much the only differences that we've got. Uh, so remember, uh, change the field, change this, where now the six is no longer the number of classes, but it's the number of labels. Uh, if we have a binary classification problem, and here just change, uh, just need to concatenate all the labels. Um, and yeah, we need to use a different loss function as well, so I'm just going to use the binary cross entropy with logit loss. It's binary because it works with binary classification problems. 
with logit it just means that it's going to apply a sigmoid function uh, which basically is going to squeeze our output uh, to a value between 0 and 1 and I think I'm pretty much ready to start the training and yeah again I'm not going to um, let it train but you guys can train it so yeah cool are there any questions in the meantime Uh, yes. Okay, I'm not sure actually if there's an if there has been an update in terms of like torch uh, versions. Uh, just make sure that you use the same code that I use because there is also the uh, functional module, uh, which imports function directly, which are lowercase. So if you use that, you might have some issues and you might have to re-adapt your code. Other than that, if you are on the same version that I'm using, uh, yeah, this should work. So I'm not sure why you're getting this error, actually. Uh, yes, yes, if it wasn't clear, yeah. So it's multi-class versus multi-label classification. Yeah, that's important because, uh, as I said, uh, in the first... Uh, case we had the output that was three but uh, that three was essentially um, three classes whereas now we have six which is six labels and each label has two classes um, okay okay it's good if you're overrun by a few minutes perfect yeah because I've still got an another couple of things to show you but um, yeah we're almost there uh, yeah, second example was a lot more compact and that's because I basically cut all of the print statement and all the things to just show you what things are. I, I did more exploration in the first sample, but in the second one I just went through with all, just the essential code. Um, hmm. Okay, uh, shouldn't take that long. Uh, it might take a little bit, but uh, shouldn't take ages. Mine took less than a minute, so yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know if it takes too long. Cool. So, uh, last few things here, and then we're going to move on to another file. Um, so, what I want you to do is just to show you how the padding works. So, I'm just going to basically call uh, a list around the train iterator um, here, and then uh, I'm just going to basically show you that. Uh, so, the pad token has position one in the vocabulary. And I'm just going to basically here just convert uh, the tensor, the input torch tensors to uh, sentences. So I'm going to do text.vocab.items, which was integers to string, the method that we saw above. And we're going to apply it to each integer for integers that are within this, uh, basically this tensor. And if we print this is just, oh, yeah, let's put any number here. Uh, so this is just a tensor, for example, this is a sentence. And so this is just going to convert. So it's going to say basically for x in this, so over all this number, just uh, take, um, apply this thing. So convert that number into the word and then join each word. Uh, together and separate them using a uh, space. That's what it's going to do. And every time there's a new sentence, it's going to print a new sentence. So if I'm going to run this, I'm just going to show you guys what this looks like. And it starts with short sentences because yeah, it starts with short, uh, shorter um, uh, batches that has, have shorter length. And you can see the unknown token here as well. Now uh, that's because I set minimum frequency equal to two uh, here which means that words appear less than uh, twice in the whole corpus I have not been included in the vocabulary. If I set this equal to one, then there shouldn't be any uh, unknown token. Uh, yeah, as we can see, you know, there are many sentences and they all have the same length, so we don't see a lot of paddings, but here we start seeing some paddings, so, and so on. Uh, and if we go further, we might have multiple padding so if we are gonna run it again you know it just change batches every time I believe uh, no because I need to put 
Mm. Okay. Yeah, I might have to uh, change it slightly to see other batteries. Uh, but you can see some other uh, longer batteries, I guess. Um, oh, sorry. Let's see this one. Uh, okay, uh, in that case, I guess perhaps we can um, try and change this. Um, and maybe let's see the last part, it should be 63. Okay, uh, well, you can play around with these, uh, and at some point, you should see things that have, uh, you know, more than one padding token at the end. Uh, however, if sentences have similar length, then yeah, you just have, you know, uh, not much padding around. Anyway, cool. So that's it. Uh, let's see if there's any other question. Uh, okay. Okay, so I think we are almost there. Uh, I'm just gonna take another five minutes. Uh, it's not gonna take long, but I'm just gonna show you a file that I wrote, which is this one, torch text uh, intro .py, which is basically uh, I should already have it loaded on PyCharm. It's a py file, so this is a script that you can use if you ever build the motor in production. Um, because notebooks are great to teach and also to debug and trying things out, but then at the end you want to put your uh, motor into a PY, a proper Python script. Uh, so here I uh, basically create a function for everything. So uh, I made everything functional. So I create a function which is dataset construction from CSV, uh, and it's got the first few things, and then iterator constructor, uh, and that takes uh, from the so the first one actually takes the raw CSV and converts it to a tabular data set. Then the second function takes a tabular data set and converts it into a back iterator. Then we got our LSTM class. And I just wrote one class which works both for uh, multi-label and multi-class classifications. So I generalized it. Uh, and then a training function. Now, uh, in the training function, there are some new arguments. For example, uh, output type, and you need to specify whether it's multi-class or binary labels. Uh, because I put some else if statements here, which are needed. And then here I put some assert statements to make sure that uh, you initialized your uh, function correctly. And if you don't, then uh, rather than breaking the code later on, I'm just gonna print out some um, yeah error that should hopefully be understandable. Uh, and here is the code. And then I'm just gonna do, yeah, if name equal main. And here I'm just going to call the function that I created. And here I'm going to train the uh, multi-class uh, motor and here I'm going to train the multi-label uh, motor. Uh, you guys can go through it in your own time. If you have any questions, feel free to put it on the uh, Slack channel and I'll, I'll try to help on that. Uh, one more thing to note, so here I put plenty of documentation as you should do if you're writing your own Python script, especially if other people are gonna use it. So I specify all the input arguments that it takes and so on for every function and every class. So you can also use the help. After you import it, this, you can use the help function to just do help this and then you should print this out. And I'm also used uh, type hinting. Uh, so this is quite helpful uh, because Python is not a typed language. So it's dynamically typed, which means that, uh, you know, things are built at runtime which means that it's not gonna tell you that there is an issue with your code until the very final point. Uh, and here, this type hinting is basically helping other people that are using your code to know what each, uh, what type each uh, function argument or class argument should be. Uh, and so it can be string and so on. And this typing library is quite helpful because you can uh, use uh, these types. Uh, so you can specify, for example, okay, this one is a list of string. This one is a list of string uh, and so on. And uh, this one here is the uh, the output. So the output of the function is a tuple that contain the first element is tabular data set, second is tabular data set, third is the same, and the fourth element is an integer. So it tells you also what each function returns. So that is quite helpful for people uh, to um, understand. And it's quite interesting because if you have a proper IDE such as PyCharm or Visual Studio, let me show you what happens. So here, for example, labels uh, is supposed to be a list of strings. Um, 
now if I'm just gonna put uh, a number here uh, let's see what happens you guys can see that it's highlighting it and if I run over with the cursor it's gonna tell me expected type list of string got integer instead so it's very useful actually uh, when you're uh, coding because it tells you as you go if there's an issue uh, but you can do it in a notebook um, and yeah it's very flexible because uh, even if I make you know even if I do have a list but I have a list of numbers um, it's gonna tell me oh hold on uh, expect a list of strings but got a list of integers instead so it is yeah you can do quite a few things with that I just wanted to show you this so yeah go over this code as well let me know on Zach if you've got any questions and yeah that was the end of our tutorial so I'm just gonna stick around literally for two minutes because I know we are overrunning if there's any other question uh, feel free to put it I'm just gonna stay here for another three minutes Yeah, and if uh, you had any issues or you didn't complete the code correctly, there is also a solution here that should work straight away. What did I generalize in the Python script? Okay, so I generalized uh, the uh, the LSTM class and the training function. So before I built the, the, the LSTM class and the training function were uh, specific to uh, each type of data set, whereas here you can use them for uh, both the multi-class and the multi-label problems. Um, so for example, here there is an if-else statement in uh, the um, training function. Uh, which is telling you, okay, if there is a, you know, multi-class problem, do this. If there is a multi-label problem, do this. Um, and then here is also checking. So make sure that you need to specify the output type to tell it what you're using. And this thing is basically checking that your output type is either multi-class or binary class. If not, uh, it's gonna raise an assertion error to tell you to basically input one of these two. And then uh, if you put multi-class, then you should only have one label because this code doesn't support multi-labels for multi-class. So it's just gonna check that if you put multi-class, the length of the label is equal to one. And uh, in here, I think, uh, what did I do? Well, not much, just that the output, I specified here that the output can be, uh, if you go on the documentation, um, the output, uh, yeah, it's not being normalized. Um, okay, yeah, so the output, yeah, I'm gonna tell you here, for multi-class mode is the number of classes, for binary classification is the number of labels. That's it. And yeah, pretty much you can run it, uh, you know. Let's see if this one works. Uh, you can run it like that. Oh uh, yeah, one thing you need to do is to set your environmental variables here as well. Uh, if you haven't done it, uh, there's various ways of doing it, uh, depending on your uh, IDE that you're using, uh, that's also uh, important. Um, so for example, uh, in PyCharm, uh, the way you do it, okay, so you see the more they start training, by the way, I'm just gonna kill it. Uh, the way you do it is you go into edit configuration and then uh, you need to basically pick environment variables and then you need to specify it here if it's not if it's not there you need to add it name value just press ok apply ok and then you're ready to go uh, yeah that's about it cool thanks guys for coming I uh, hope that was helpful uh, yeah again if you have any feedback uh, on how I can improve let me know uh, you can put it on the Slack uh, channel or you can send me a DM on 
Slack as well. Uh, my username is just Andrea. And yeah, see you next time.